Hello friends, welcome to Letterkenny Island Developers Group. So today in this video we are going to talk about some process automation doubts and questions. So we will look into uh, questions about how to differentiate between workflow, process builder and flow, when to use which and uh, what are the benefits and what are the features of these automation tools. We'll also see how to solve a um, couple of questions about workflow, process builder and flows, which option to choose in which scenario. And lastly, we'll also see custom objects, page layouts, record types, and what are the use of these different uh, uh, customization tools in Salesforce. So let's begin. Uh, Nishan, I'm a mm -hmm. little bit struggling in the difference between a workflow, flow, and process builder. Okay. So when to use that and, mm -hmm. you know, like, I get confused which one option to select, like what is the best practice regarding this right. three? Right. So workflow rules were the, you can say the first option which we had and initially we only had workflow rules for the automation, which was uh, when the Salesforce started and all the classic thing. So in work, mm -hmm. we only have these four options and uh, we can only there would be one evaluation criteria basically you check one criteria if that criteria is met you do either of these four actions immediately or after some time mm. so that's a basic thing which workflow rule can do and uh, there are some options like created and edited created and edited to subsequently meet the criteria this is kind of uh, so basically created and edited means uh, whatever criteria you mention let's say the criteria is opportunity amount equals to 1000 so whenever the record is edited and if the system finds the opportunity amount as 1000 it will run the actions whereas if you said this third option created and edited to meet the criteria it means whatever criteria you have mentioned that was not meeting earlier before the edit was made so let's say the criteria is opportunity amount 1000 so this will be satisfied only if the amount was not 1000 and you made some changes or you updated the amount to make it more than 1000 so only in that scenario the actions will run so that's the third criteria edited to subsequently meet yeah so it was let's say you have opportunity amount of the condition is thousand if its amount is thousand or more then you send out a, like a email alert email Right. So when and then, I created opportunity, it was only 800, but I then updated to 1000. In that case, the number three will be fired, correct? No, this is this you will set. So you will set this uh, conditions when creating the workflow. You can either uh, yeah. set to the created one, so it will run only once. So when you create the record. Got it. This will run every time you edit the record and if the criteria is met. The third one is special that it will ex try to execute every time, but the criteria which is mentioned shouldn't have met before and after the edit whatever you made the criteria is being met that's the key so let's say uh, opportunity amount you created was 800 uh, the condition we have is 1000 opportunity amount 1000 so you created with 800 now it didn't run because uh, 800 is less criteria is not being met mm. and we have set this to the third one and then we are considering okay so now criteria is not met now you edited it you made it uh, 1100 so this time the criteria met and it ran and right. also uh, then you do it edit again to you make it 1200 so that time the system will check what was the value it was already meeting the criteria now the edit whatever you have made has not made it meet the criteria so it will not run that time so when you make it 1200 it will not run in this third scenario but if it was in a second scenario it will run when you make it 1200 also because that is also greater than 1000 right so Got that's it. the difference between second and third okay, okay. this option is available in um, process builder also so now we go to process builder uh, process builder has these uh, different criteria so you can set criteria uh, multiple criteria one two three so there are it's kind of combining all the workflows in one place so for one object let's say this is kind of a whatever you have in the workflow rule right that kind of structure you can put all the workflow rules all together in a process builder with more actions so you can call this that way so you have uh, workflow rules sitting all together with more features or more capabilities 
for one object. So this process builder always runs for one specific object. And best practices, you should always have one process per object. So you should always the best practice. Uh, there might be a question around this. Uh, so that should be the best practices to only have one process builder or one flow, one trigger per object. So you should only have one of these automation per object. So this is the comparison, right? So these the only four items we have in workflow, whereas here we have a lot of additional things. We can create any record, not just task record. You can update any related record, not just the master detail parent. Then you can uh, log a call, record update, all those things. You can launch the flow. Now I'll come to flow before that. So you can launch a flow if you want. Then you can post chatter, submit the record for approval and call one another process builder. Basically, so there are some process builders which will be uh, you can call from one process builder to another process builder. Those are called invocable process. Then you can call Apex. Only thing is it doesn't support the outbound message thing. Which is there in workflow, but you can achieve this with a uh, writing that in an Apex and then call the Apex. So that will do the job. But yeah, it doesn't support out of the box outbound message thing. That you just and, give and, an endpoint. Nishan, when you say outbound message, means outbound message out of Salesforce or so third party. Yeah, so outbound messages, uh, like how I said, so emails are basically we send it to a person. Right. Email message, right? Outbound message is something a SOAP message. It's an XML message which we send to a endpoint, a third point, so some URL basically, which is a web or a, a server, whatever. So you send that SOAP message XML to that third party. So what outbound message feature in uh, Salesforce is you just give the endpoint and you define what all fields from the object you want to send the values like account name opt uh, id amount those things you select those fields and it will form the xml by itself and send to that endpoint so that's a outbound message feature in salesforce which is not there in a process builder so for what you need to do is you need to write a apex class from there you create a web service call that endpoint and create your own soap message and send it to it so you don't get that uh, flexibility of configuring the outbound message in process builder. Okay. Got it. Okay. 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 So this was process builder. This is also good uh, comparison what you were asking, right? So when to use what? So there are different uh, automation tools. There is something called quick action. Also, this is also very important. Maybe you might be somewhere uh, this come in picture. Um, so quick actions uh, because process builder we talked about quick action is basically the buttons right on the account we have some buttons like uh, uh, log a call log a task and it opens yep. a small yep. screen right mm -hmm. where you fill some in uh, it, it saves, saves the record. record so quick actions is basically a small or minified ui where you can customize the ui not open the whole account record you just want three fields to be filled and then that's done so you can do that kind of thing so that gives you a user interface. You can customize the user interface, but don't give you any uh, backend logic to run. Just some limited fields. You can pre-fill the data and then give that to user and user saves it and it creates a record. So quick action is where it gives you a UI con configurations, customizations, but not on the logic backend. Process Builder doesn't give you a UI. It only gives you option to automate the backend logic like this happens that's what you create the record what everything happens in the back end you don't have any ui which you get in browser builder whereas flows gives you both the things it gives you a user interface also to interact with the user and also you can do some if else loop and uh, uh, business logic which you want to implement so flows okay. will come into picture where you want both these things and with configuration you don't need to write any uh, code so lightning components these web components this you can do but then you need to write a code flow is something out of the box you configure it it's a low code tool so so nishan even but, up in the work, also workflow also has an interface correct no okay. workflows okay. also are like process builder so workflows process builder is the upgrade of workflow so that's why i didn't mention here so process workflow is gone now i think there won't be any question in which you will have option as workflow rule the option would be process builder flow Got or it. apex Makes it won't sense. have workflow rule because they have now said you replace workflow with process builder mm -hmm. okay. Got it. yep hmm so i think 
this covers right so and the flow yeah. there are a lot of things again in flow like screen flows auto launch flow so screen flow is where the screen is there auto launch mm -hmm. flow is where you can run the backend there is no screen in it so these kind of things you can even call from process builder so one i told that process builder can call a flow but it can call only that flow which doesn't have screens which is the auto launch the only the automation part but if it has a screen you can't call them from process builder because process only yeah, back process and then the auto can be uh, very flexible you can run from uh, code or you can create it in a page somewhere right and use it there on the screen to create some records or whatever so benefits of screen and the flow is you get more flexibility for the in the flows uh, you have ability to create full flow chart like you have ability to uh, take the decisions like if else conditions you have ability to run the for loops so you can iterate over the items and then you can get the data from salesforce like doing a sockle query right so similarly yeah. you can get data using some configuration items it will retrieve the data you can do some dml updates on the data so you have the update records all these different type of elements are there which you can drag and drop and create your flow chart which will uh, run as you design basically so it's almost like writing a code with uh, configuration so it's very powerful um, need to be used very precisely and you can do whatever you want to with a flow but there are some limitations on the ui that it will only generate the standard salesforce ui it won't give you flashy ui which you maybe think like automatically things are happening and those kind of things but yeah it's and very mm -hmm. yeah so nishan one question will be like can you give me one example when will you use like a flow builder versus process you know like a flow versus the process builder because i know the only change is a ui but otherwise right. other conditions are the same so like can you give me one example where you sure, have sure. so see flow builder will be first thing as you said ui wherever it comes in a picture in a question where it says business wants to get input from a user then you are clear that you need to go with flow okay because uh, process builder cannot have a user interface where they can take some inputs from the uh, users we can we can see some if you have some questions let's uh, go with them and then we yeah. i'll tell you from which word we can identify that yeah this word is the catchy point where which says turn the table go to flow builder and not process builder so there would be one or two words which will then uh, identify so let's see that yeah let me see if i can get that question this one right okay so let's go through this question as a service manager wants to send an email reminder to customers who have failed their energy audit to schedule another audit after they have completed the required modification they want this to be done weekly for all the records that still have failed status how can a salesforce administrator easily fulfill this requirement now the question comes is we need to send it every week so need to run this process every week so this mm. is the point here right so process builder will be triggered when you so when you do any modification on record it will trigger basically so when you create edit those kind of things but process builder cannot run by its own like uh, you put it in a schedule it's running keep on running but flows you can schedule them got it right so uh, it will schedule basically so it will run and it will try to fetch so now you see now we are fetching from the database all the audits even with that right. point itself it is flow because now what we need to do is we need to fetch from the database all the customers who have not set the energy audit to true or whatever they have not done that audit so now we need to identify from the system that these are the flagged accounts to which we need to send email so there itself it is clear that we are not doing any change or dml on those records we need to identify it so basically we need to fetch from the system so again that points towards a flow now there could be now because here it is also saying apex 
so apex is something more advanced where we want we can do some additional things so which we can not achieve in flow so let's let's wait for that also maybe this is a see workflow rule it's out not of possible course. out yeah. of question process builder we say no because on the dml itself we should trigger so now we have eliminated two options already yeah. now only what we are left is with a flow or we go fully apex okay again first thing we'll try to see if it satisfy the flow because we try to always go for the configuration first and then customization mm -hmm. okay so now manager want to fail the energy audit to schedule another audit after they have completed the required modification we want this to be done weekly for record that still have failed audit status so yeah so i don't think there is anything uh, which demands a batch apex for record that failed energy audit and schedule apex to send the email flow should be uh, sufficient to uh, achieve this requirement got it okay that's good yeah batch apex would have come into picture does it says why that answer is not no okay batch apex made be would have come in picture when it would say the volumes are very high uh, flow would not be able to handle we need to manage large data volumes the account size is very big and weekly uh, the number of uh, accounts which will be set into the this criteria to send emails are also very high like uh, 20000 or 11000 something like that and then we need to process them batch by batch yeah that we are we will... yeah i think you are that's what he said they can be also done using apex batch hmm. because for the more complicated one this is more complex yeah that's that's what we're more complex where there is large data volumes or you need to process them very okay uh, yeah so okay let's uh... automating approval process right submitting for approval so that is available in process builder so we can use to submit the records super using process builder so there are two tools they are asking for it Anishan. So value, they need two answers. Yeah, so process builder is definitely. And flow. Right, validation is rule workflow is old. Got it. Okay, got it. Hmm. One other, other area I just wanted to understand is a record type. A little hmm. bit confused about the record type. So what exactly, so let's say you have a hmm. different processes sales process or opportunity you hmm. will create a different record types to manage the different process and each record type can have different pages i'm a little bit not clear on that concept okay i'll i'll, I'll come to that okay so like on the salesforce object level we can uh, always start from on the top level which is the object mm -hmm okay and that object we will have various fields and you can create various relationship so this is talking from the data model perspective so you have various fields which you create on an object and then various relationship with another objects that's a, a top level classification of object and then that object can be repurposed or reused for different business use cases right so when you try to reuse that same object for different uh, business purpose or business process you create a record type of that object so record type is nothing but uh, creating a very uh, invisible layer so it will uh, basically what you can achieve with record type is uh, first business processes like what you told the sales process support process so uh, these processes are nothing but they are also like a pick list values only right the status values so the lead status can have qualified um, prospecting win so there could be five lead status uh, statuses um, which are available on your object which you define out of which only three are applicable for one of the process where we are selling this opportunity to our high valued partner whereas if we are selling this opportunities to wholesalers the lead uh, the values change opportunity or whatever it is so the the pipeline or the path changes uh, basically the pick list values changes and which we want to control then what we do is record type so that record type will help us uh, define what pick list values are applicable for this kind of uh, 
record type of this object so one opportunity can have different record types for different different business processes like for mm -hmm. international process we use some different pick list value for domestic selling we use some different pick list value so like that okay so Got that it. comes the record type also record type gives a benefit to create different page layouts so now there is page layout which we can create and associate with one record type so a record type can have one or many page layouts associated to it for a particular profile so record type and profiles combination will have one page layout assigned to them so let's say sales people with this record type sees sales page layout and then uh, sales people uh, service people with the uh, record type a sees page layout another page layout and then what we can do is on that page layout we add only the fields which we want them to see so we can control the fields visibility uh, on there and also if you want on the page layout make some fields as a required to fill them right so record type gives a benefit to uh, break this object into uh, smaller pieces of business where they can uh, use it so object will be the big one which has all the fields all the pick list values and uh, all the different type of page layouts will create but then how to map them to a different or the right set of users is using record type even for the users we can define their default record type so if we say sales people their default record type is domestic uh, then they open it so they it opens directly that layout for them so we are filtering from this object which has a lot of fields only those specific fields which are relevant for them based on a record type so uh, nishan one profile or one user can access multiple record types right correct it is possible, right? it is possible. And, for, and each record type can be associated to one or multiple page layout correct but one page layout will only have one record or it can have multiple record type yeah so a combination of record type and profile is a okay it gives Got you it. the right page layout what you would see so that's called page layout assignment so whenever we do the assignment of the page layout we'll assign that page layout to one profile and one record type you can go go into any object and just open that page layout assignment page you will see that so it will have um, record types uh, profiles on the horizontal and then vertical you will have the profile names and so on and then you can assign the page layout on that junction what page layout fits for this record type and this profile got it okay i think this is very helpful nishan and uh, uh, nishan two more points i want to discuss uh, then i'll stop one is the you know this customization custom objects right hmm. so Nishan, where what I read was on a standard object, also you can add some fields, mm -hmm. right? And yes. and custom object, you can have a new table with new fields and all, right? Yes. So, and uh, you can connect your standard object to the custom objects and all, right? So, right. are there any like, uh, you know, like uh, things to consider when you are you know, having this, I don't have a question as such, but I just want to know from a data model perspective, mm -hmm. um, like, uh, like, you know, when you do one to many, like many to many, or, you know, that, I just wanted mm -hmm. to get some little bit more, uh, you know, master right. detail and the pick list. That was, I was a little bit confused on mm -hmm. that. Right. So first, you know, these are the standard objects, right? Campaign, lead, account, contact, opportunity, case. Um, and then there are some more which are also a little bit uh, from the exam perspective, like orders, products, price book. Yep. So basically, the, the sales things, mostly the sales related items, and then a case uh, for the support. So if you are doing sales, you also have a case which you can uh, do for the account so yeah. our main center point is the account and the contact so account will have many contacts and then with that account we create various opportunities to sell the product so the opportunities will have a products line items basically into it so there there comes the picture the product and when the opportunity is win we place an order as well so the order also is kind of a copy of opportunity same to same uh, we get all the 
things in the order and then that is basically sent to the customer so there you track all those shipping details and those things but it's opportunity is copy only right uh, order and then yep. uh, once it is sold if there is any uh, support related issues or inquiries you have a case related so case will be also a child for that account so there can be one or many cases locked against that account so this is the main uh, sales cycle so these are the standard uh, object ship uh, which are now let's say some uh, so account will have by default billing address and shipping address but now in your system you have a lot of addresses like you have uh, sold to address you have there are many different type of addresses we see so one account can have many addresses which you want to track this is a business use case now how you achieve it one option is uh, so many fee account press one build to address to street to build to city other than that what you can have is you can create a custom object uh, beneath account so a child object of account called addresses and then you can have a type build to ship to sold to and then you have the address fields like street city country zip code and then you can create various addresses for this particular account so in that case you created a new custom object created a lookup or master detail to account i'll come to lookup master detail but you created that relationship with account and then created those child records the addresses to store the information right so that way you can go with the custom objects in case you require them so that you need to take a decision based on how uh, normalize the data you want or how denormalize you can keep depending on the situation if there are a lot of fields it would be better putting them in a separate custom object and then associating with that a parent right so okay that is so, when so you Nishan. decide to go for a custom object yeah so i just want to know like in your experience has there been any any uh, you know right now because cam campaign lead are different object than account but i want to have some kind of like a lead to account uh, you know connection so you have to create some custom object to connect lead to an account or is lead to account is already there so what you see is campaigns right. will have leads uh campaigns can also have a contact associated to them as a campaign member so campaign okay. to lead and contacts will are called campaign members basically in salesforce terms these are campaign members and uh, the lead basically when qualifies and converts so the lead when converts it gets created into a account contact and optionally an opportunity got it there, there got could it. be a question around this as well i think i've seen sometimes can be converted into account contact and optionally an opportunity so this okay. is a lead conversion process out of the box available in salesforce which can be leveraged to do that and once that is converted the lead record when you open a converted lead record it will have just the hyperlinks to navigate to those account contact and opportunity so it will be kind of a disabled one you can't edit the data but you can navigate to the one which get converted okay okay got it so that kind of thing is already there um, but otherwise if you want anything uh, we can definitely connect these object separately also like if i want to connect opportunity to contact i want to store the opportunity a decision maker as a contact on opportunity i can create a lookup uh, on the opportunity to a contact and then uh, populate that contact on opportunity so this is a custom relationship i can create in between uh, the contact and opportunity if i want to so that kind of uh, additional additional or extra uh, relationship if you want you can create and what yep. options we have is uh, the two master detail and lookup got it master detail is like a parent child and lookup is both both are parent child Oh, both are parent child. Uh, right. So this is outdated. I think there are more numbers we can do. Let's not let's not go by the number, but let's go by the other points like the security and access. So when we create a lookup relationship, the point of security comes very important. So the access, right? Security model. So um, if you have access to the parent, 
the access to the child is not given directly in the lookup relationship they are independent they are parent child but their security and access is independent in a lookup relationship so you need to separately give access for the parent and then you need to give separately access for the child using the owd role hierarchy sharing rule all that methods what we have for sharing yep and securing the access so you need to give that for the parent as well as child in the lookup type whereas in uh, master retail the access to the parent determines the access to children so if you have access to the parent then you would also have access to the child records and that you can define when you create the master retail you can say even if you have read access to the uh, parent you would have access to the child records or you can also say if you have read write access to the parent then only you will have uh, read write access to the child and so on so you can define how it is controlling but the controlling level will be always parent so the access to child is determined from the parent then second uh, very important is cascade delete that's a term cascade delete so when you delete the parent it automatically delete the child that will happen only for master retail because master retail is a tightly coupled relationship so the child can never exist without the parent so you need to always have a parent you can't uh, keep the uh, lookup or the the lookup i'm using the word lookup basically where you look up to the parent where you populate that parent so it can be master retail where you are populating the master and in lookup you are populating the parent uh, so in lookup relationship you can keep that empty it's not a required field parent is not required here you can keep even blank and the child record can exist on its own whereas in master retail uh, the child should always have a uh, parent associated with it and if you delete the parent the child records get deleted okay like a uh, let's say hypothetical scenario uh, where we said the addresses right so the account have those addresses mm -hmm. built to ship to addresses so those addresses are very specific and tied to that particular account right so it can only exist or present for that particular account because that's for that building or the company which we are talking about if you delete that account that's no more our customer then we don't need those addresses in our system right so we uh, join them as a master retail god we want the relation and well, again need to consider the security part also before just saying master retail we the security of the addresses we want them to see if we see the account so then uh, we go with master retail whereas it could be like a uh, some car is your product and then you have the car parts as also mm -hmm. your products right and then you associate the car and the car parts as a lookup because the car part can exist independently it can be sold independently it it's available there in system right you don't need to delete those parts if the car is deleted they don't have yep. a tight relationship so in that scenario you would create a lookup that these are the car and these are the parts associated to it the child records so that kind of scenario you would create lookup okay got it okay i think this is clear this is okay good okay i think so, uh, Nish, yeah i think this yeah was... this is good these these points you can if you keep in mind and whenever you get the question try to assess that question against these points um, you would uh, get the answer the roll up yeah. is also very important the roll up summary fields can only be done on master retail you can't do roll up summary fields for a look of relationship like getting the average min max sum so i think these points are really good if you i'll paste this link for you yeah and uh, i went through all the uh, videos which you had posted and it was very helpful very honestly see because when you read it it's difficult but mm -hmm. when someone explains it's very easy to understand so i think those was very helpful yeah okay okay yeah. thank you uh this ppt if you are looking for uh, you can go to the chatter group okay uh, i'll give where you. is that so if you go to this chatter group i will add you to the group and then access the uh the files basically all the content so these the contents the files will have all these ppts in it if you are preparing for the admin certification now we have an upcoming webinar coming 
on 26th of September where we'll be preparing the admin certification. We'll dive in the process automation in detail, look around what's the best practice, how to choose the right automation tool. And we'll also understand the new syllabus and what are the changes in the new syllabus. And you can win a certification voucher as well, part of the uh, quiz we will play. So to register for the certification voucher, just go to the link uh, flashing on your screen and in the upcoming meetings, go and register for this session. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you like the video, please hit the like button and also do subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get notified with all the new upcoming videos. Thank you.